Well, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to have an initial look at that Chrysler set just to see what sort of condition it's in and a few cursory checks uh, just to see what we may need to do. Okay, so let's take a look at it now. Okay, well here's the actual set, and you can see that everything is in reasonably good nick. The tuning cord and everything is even working. Let's take a look at the power cable. Just a cursory check of it. Looks okay. antenna and ground leads. Now if we have a look at the instructions to remove the chassis, remove the two control knobs, two screws in the back of the cabinet and four screws in the base. Remove the loose back of cabinet and chassis can be removed through the rear. So there we go, felt pad, that one, and the felt is also on the other one. Two screws here. These ones look original. So we've got a connector here between PU and the other's not marked, but there is a showing a jumper there. And the back panel now comes off. I'm going to just put that back in there so don't forget. Right, so let's have a look at it. Okay, well, we don't have four screws here any longer. We actually have one screw. If you can see that. It's a wood screw. Obviously, that is not original. Now, let's have a look at this. Okay. It's a little bit grubby in there, but but not too bad at all, really. Let's put that aside for a minute. Right, now, we've got to be careful here that we don't destroy anything. This power cord just goes through a hole in the chassis here. The knot to stop it pulling out. No grommet or anything like that there. Um, <laughs> bit dodged but anyway so just taking a general look at the at the chassis it's obviously fairly grubby no horrible burn marks or anything like that all of the valves or tubes are in place it looks like a masonite backing for the front it looks in good condition Obviously the chassis had other uses. There's a number of uh, bases here that aren't populated. So they must have used one chassis for multiple models by the looks of it. And just tilt it up on its side for the minute. Yeah, that should be okay. Well, okay. Um, interesting. I'll just flip this over to give you a better look lay that there like that safely some interesting things though so these two electrolytics I'd be surprised if they are original I'm shocked in fact I'm sure they're a later edition 
Mind you, still fairly old, so I'm inclined to think I'll just replace them anyway. The other thing I can see is there's a number of older paper capacitors that can go one there, there, one there. Um, I think that might be one in there as well. So I think just as a matter of course, we'll get rid of those. They look pretty crappy, to be honest. So better off gone. And there's no real horrible looking charred resistors or anything like that. So, you know, all in all, it doesn't actually look too bad. Okay, well, before anything else, I'll just do a couple of cursory checks that I like to do, just to see how things are traveling. We've got about 70 ohms across the transformer. So, and the switch is obviously working. So what I like to do is, as I check things, I like to just highlight where I've been just on a version of the circuit so we can just highlight this. The switch obviously works so no issues there and the primary of the transformer is obviously okay. So we can just tick off that as being okay. As far as the secondary side is concerned we've got the heater winding and we've got the windings here for the HT. If we pull out the rectifier tube, we can actually just test the resistance of that transformer just to make sure that looks okay. The other winding is the 6.3 volt winding. Now that's obviously a little bit harder to um, measure because the resistance is gonna be so much less. And also, I mean, it's got all the tube heaters across it and the lamps. But if you pull out all of the tubes and the uh, dial lights, then it should be possible to measure that. It looks like C17 actually has an 80 in place. So if we go to the negative side of that. Okay, so let's see what we get on these. So that's 296 ohms. Yeah, around the 300 mark. So those windings there look okay. And at least that connection onto C17 looks okay. The heater windings Yeah, so we've got about one ohm, which is probably not actually unreasonable through there for that heater. Okay, so there is another check that we can do. <clears throat> what I've got happening now is I've fed a 50 hertz signal from the signal generator into the primary of the transformer. If we just take a look at the heater, we've actually got a voltage on there. And if we change the signal generator, we're actually seeing a change here as well. So that would sort of tend to indicate that that transformer's not looking too bad anyway. Now if we just have a look at the HT, again we've got a voltage showing up there which is varying with the signal generator 0.81 there and if we have a look at the other side around the same 0.81 so I think that we can reasonably safely say that that power transformer looks okay I'm checking the resistance and also just doing some cursory checks with the signal generator Right, now the other thing that I like to check with these is the output transformer for the speaker because if this doesn't work then really finding one of these is not that easy so you know it may just affect whether I proceed with the restoration or not. The easiest thing that I find 
is to again use the signal generator let's try a one kilohertz tone and I just want to put it on the primary of that transformer now the easiest way to get to that if we follow the wire back from the transformer so C17 if we look at the positive side of that and the other uh, point is going to be the anode of the output tube which is the 6M5 which is this one here and the anode will be this one and if you can hear that we've got a signal and so with that we can safely assume that the output transformer is okay and certainly tested back to here is okay and down to this capacitor is okay so we've already tested quite a bit of the circuitry there now the other thing is we know that the secondary is okay of that transformer and the speaker so with just a few cursory checks a we've checked some safety aspects before we power this up and we've also identified a few components that are already okay they're the basic checks I'd, I'd like to do with these capacitors having been replaced I'm sort of half tempted to power this up but looking at these old capacitors here that are looking pretty pretty shit to be absolutely frank I'm just a little wary and the reason I'm a little bit wary is if we take a look at some of these uh, capacitors we have here we've got uh, HT on the anode here and we've got a capacitor here and a capacitor here which are basically feeding back onto the control grid of the 6M5 now admittedly they both have to be leaky for us to get you know a large positive voltage on that grid but if we do the 6M5 could um, get very very unhappy about it and based on the way that this reflex circuit works in that we're amplifying two signals the the audio and the IF through this particular valve and just the configuration of the capacitors look I wouldn't be surprised if there are other scenarios such as that where a similar thing could happen so I think what I will do is take a look at these particular capacitors here and on spec I'm just going to order some replacements unfortunately I don't have uh, high voltage capacitors here I Oh, there's another one hidden underneath there as well joy oh joy that'll be great to get at uh, so look i'll put an order in for those and get them and i'm just going to change those out on spec i'm not even going to start this up on dim bulb test or anything like that i'm just going to change them out because at the end of the day look at this there's wax on the surface of this one they all look pretty shit to be frank so they're going to have to be replaced anyway so I might just do that on spec and get a couple of new electrolytics and replace them as well and then we'll come back to this and get it powered up and start taking a look at it in earnest okay cheers for now if you like what I'm doing then please do like the video if you'd like to see more then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.